Hello, LinkedIn community and YouTube. My name is Sophia Marie. Welcome to my channel. I'm a security analyst at the Cyber Defense Operations Center for Microsoft and a security enthusiast. Uh, this channel is intended to create the free media tutorials for education purposes related to the Azure Cloud. Today's video, we're going to begin a new series related to the different uh, techniques that you can use for enumeration and, and understand the dangers of anonymous access enable for these storage accounts. So to begin this demo, I want to show that in the screen, I just imported a module from uh, Macroburst. This is a module that you can find available in GitHub. I will have the link in the description. In right now, it has multiple modules in which you will have the requirement to have the AC CLI and AC PowerShell and other modules installed previously to the usage. Um, mainly, we're going to be focusing in the script that is in the invoke enumeration of Azure Blobs. So if you're new uh, to Azure, uh, let's understand what Azure Blobs are. Okay, so Azure storage accounts to begin with, and I'm going to present my lab for a second. So you can see here we have a storage account. So let's define a storage account. So storage accounts are basically a namespace that you create within Azure to store your data, right? How this namespace works is that you will have the availability to browse it by HTTP or HTTPS. And one of the main reasons why people like storage accounts, first of all, is that it's highly scalable. There is that you can put a lot of information on both. Secondly, is high availability. There are different redundancy paths that you can take uh, depending on your needs. And then it's going to be secure, right? You can go ahead and enable things like the vendor force charge. You can have locks, you can have visibility. You can use your Azure Active Directory to sign in to this. You can have different keys. So as much as you can configure it, it's highly customable. There are different um, types of storage accounts. We're not going to go over the details, but I do want to explain how this storage account will hold information. Um, for today's presentation, we're going to focus on the data storage of two types. As you can see over here, let me just come up. Uh, we're going to be focusing in containers and file shares. With file shares, okay? So as an income, file shares are very similar to the Windows to the Windows image that we have, right? So file shares can use um, the SAMPA protocol and industry standard. So you can go ahead and map it um, using Linux, Mac, or Windows. And it's gonna be organized the same way that you map a network. In the other hand, we have containers. So containers, as the name says, it's a holder. And there are three resources that are gonna be aligned. And I wanted to show a really good article from Microsoft that demonstrates this in a more visual way to have a clear understanding. So over here in the diagram, we can see right the main account, the main storage account, inside of it is gonna be two containers. So the container that has pictures and within pictures you have that block that possesses the pictures and then you have a container that are moves. One of the things of containers and blobs is that it's on a structured data. Right, it doesn't require actually a file extension. Uh, you can just go ahead and drop it. And that is one of the main things and, and key differences that is going to be important when you're choosing uh, what, how you would like to use this. So let me just go back again to the lab. And here you can see um, in which we have the name of the container and then if there's any anonymous access and you can see here we have what it's just the container and what actually is the blob, right? The container is going to be the placeholder for what the blob has. Now, um, when one of the other really cool features that we're going to be talking today, it's the static web. So if I come here, you can see I can have an static website. I can host within a web storage account on the static website, and it can be recalling, let's say, anything from these storage accounts on the fly, as long as in my HTML file, I'm calling them out. And one of the things why this is cool for attackers, depending if you have a misconfiguration, is the enumeration. So let's go back to what we were discussing about 
a microburst that is a tool that we're going to be demoing today. Okay. The one second. So here's microburst. And here we have what we were talking about in bulk enumeration after blocks. So this is a command line that just let me edit this. This is going to use what we call a base. A base usually is going to be that domain name if you like. For example, that domain name that we're working with, it's going to go ahead and look for all the storage accounts and we do have one, right? Um, you can test different domain names and because it is a storage account and it's only being accessible from anywhere you like, you're going to be able to see it. So if I were to be doing a targeted attack and I'm already taking the look about the name and I want to see if this is, has any anonymous access, right? Because this is the main thing. Um, the anonymous access could be a misconfiguration or it could be something that you're needing because of your application. And we're going to go in detail how to prevent this to happen, but let's see the attack. So we know we have this uh, blob storage, right? And how can we connect to a blob storage? Okay, Microsoft also has a tool that is a storage explorer right here, the Microsoft Azure Storage Explorer. And you can try to connect anonymously using here. One of the things that you see when you try to connect, and we're going to demo real quick, is that it's going to ask you for a path, right? Here we only have the block. We don't have an actual path to connect. So if we come here, I think I already had mm, some connected, but let's see. I'm going to say we're going to connect to an Azure resource. And here we're going to, um, here you can have the storage account itself or the block container. So we're going to do the both. So if you try to go into the, um, the storage account itself, right? The, let's say the one that holds both the blobs and the false shares, it doesn't allow you to go with anonymous access. So we go back and now we're going to choose the block now. Here, you do have the option to do an anonymous login, but we don't have a container name. We have a storage account name. And one of the main things is how can we find that block? Okay. So remember what we were talking about static web configuration? That's a main key point. There are other ways, but this is one of the easiest ways is to see if there is any uh, of the websites where you're doing the target attack, you have to understand what is your target. So maybe you already uh, became aware that this company has as well a website. And we need to figure if anything on the website this company is publishing is calling out a container path. And uh, just want to be super clear, the aesthetic web config, you can configure the domain name. Um, let me just go back to that configuration. So the how this is going to look, there's going to be a domain name. You just have to wait for the replication. Um, I haven't configured it, so I'm using the default name. So that's why it's this name, right? But of course, we can have DNS and make it look pretty. Now, again, this is a very easy HTML that I wanted to create on the fly. And how can you look at this? Okay, so as you know, you have F12, the developer tools. You can use Fiddler, Burp Suite, whatever you like, whatever you choose. But one of the things is that you want to expect the response of the website and see if anything on the HTML file is calling out a location of your interest. So we are here in network, we reload. We choose all and there's this image. And when we inspect it, of course, because again, um, the point is that we're making a lot easy to go to demonstrate how could a tiny little mistake can uh, make this vulnerable. So uh, right here, you could see that if you see the request URL for the image that we have here attached, it tells us the type of containers, right? And in HTML, I want to be super clear, I had it here. 
it's super easy actually so in the html you could see here where i configure the blob and just said think outside the box and upload the image to that blob uh, which is really useful for developers that's why we have to be also careful in how we're publishing and data controlling so let's say if in a good practice, if a developer is configuring this, he will like to configure this in a way that only public accessible data will be there. So we're going to actually take a look at this. So let me take this name over here, which is the container. Okay. Now, there are a couple of ways for you. You could go ahead and test it now that we have Data Explorer. Or if you like, you can also use the um, Web browser and see if there's anything else you like to see. So, from the data explorer right here, let's go back. Let's do next. Now we have somewhere to go. We say next. And we say that we want to connect to the source. We're going to see if it connects. And let's exit out here. I'm boom. So, I'm seeing. And this is a blob. I don't know. Let me cancel out of here. So here we have the different containers, and we can see different data that it shouldn't be there. Of course, we can see what the uh, website displayed, but these data doesn't sound something that you want to be having published. Um, another way is that you can use a web browser. So in here, you're going to actually have the flag for show all in HTTP. And you can go ahead and list it in an XML view, the different things of the container. If you want to, before you try to connect, you want to find out what are you going to be connecting. And if it's something useful, uh, here's a good example of it. So this is about the first part of it. And I was inspired in another video YouTube. And uh, also for uh, catching the flags from the, I think it's the Azure Broken Lab series. Um, what I'm doing differently is that actually I want to show you how this lab is created and how you can go ahead and do it. Now, if you haven't, um, I'm going to link also the in the description, the link for how to create an Azure lab. So this lab is created with the a purple network. So purple network, it uses Terraform as if you haven't seen it. And I'm just going to go over here. So one sec. So, this is a purple cloud um, lab that you can find. And when you have here, you see that I already have the generators of storage. So when I was creating this, and as you can see, it's brand new created, I decided to give the name of the account. Um, okay, one second. This is when I created the website. Right here. So this is the how you do it. So here you have the uh, Python script for the storage. Now, then what you wanted to do when I was doing the Sunfire one, it's the name of the storage account. Here we go. So I will put the name of the storage account and the location. And this will automatically create the different containers and the different files for me to do. Um, then what I went ahead and did is that once I had that, I used the Microsoft guide in order to update the properties of that account name and decided to create, as you could see, and that's where I had the typo, it will have to look like this. So this way I can have the newly created storage account having an static website. And by all means, uh, I wasn't gonna, gonna sit down and wanted to do a pretty website. I decided to just download a pre-custom one, edit, the HTML file and point an image. So if you want to go ahead and if you're interested in looking at a more detailed video on building a storage lab, please let me know. And in the second part of this video, we're going to go over the configurations and the usage of the funder for cloud. So thank you for watching. Have a good one. Bye-bye.